Welcome to a look at Authorship and the Saw franchise. The seven Saw films, released annually from 2004 to 2010, were helmed by four different directors, and today we will be looking at the effects that each director had on the franchise. Two Men Locked in a Room, the premise James Wan brought to his filmmaking partner and screenwriter Lee Wannell. A cheap idea that the two men planned to make on their own dime. But after convincing from their agent, the men brought the script and a short scene they had shot from its pages to the U.S. Finding producers that were so impressed with the Aussie duo that they were allowed their caveats of starring and directing, James Wan became the franchise's first director. Shot in 18 days on a soundstage in California, Saw was made fast, which was a stress for Wan. He has stated in interviews that he was constantly rushed. But regardless of the time crush, Juan created a hit, a psychological horror with a perfect balance of blood and backstory. Saw was a horror film with characters people cared about and a premise that left audiences scratching their head then dropping their jaws, all under the leadership of James Wan. Saw was a break for more than just its original creators. It also became the open door that writer-director Darren Lynn Bousman needed to get his script made. Bousman had been shopping his script The Desperate for over a year with little results due to its violent nature and proximity to Saw. But when a sequel to Saw was desired, the producer saw the perfect way to shrink the gap between films by adapting Faustman's film into Saw 2. This adaptation upped the gore factor in the franchise and paved the way for the gore and violence to grow in each of the sequels he directed. The subsequent films under Bousman's direction continued to focus on traps and torture over the intrigue and mystery of the first film. It is Bousman's leadership that shaped the Saw franchise, for better or worse, into the gore-laden series it became. Moving into Saw 5, the director came from within the Saw family, production designer David Hackle. Hackle brought with him to the director's chair a focus on the art of the film, but outside of the intense focus on art was a focus on character. In an interview with Horror.com, Hackle stated, Something that was a very big element that I wanted to pull through this whole thing was the emotional context. Hackle used his turn at the helm to answer multiple lingering questions and build up the characters we had come to know, but overall provided what is generally regarded as one of the worst received of the franchise's films. Another member of the Saw family stepped up to direct the final two films, series editor Kevin Groydert, the director responsible for one of the best and one of the worst films in the franchise. Going into Saw 6, Groydert stated in behind-the-scenes interviews that he thought that Saw worked best when it was about a person facing a series of life challenges and wanted to use that by focusing on one man's journey. This thinking led to what Rotten Tomatoes has ranked the best film since the original Saw. However, when it came time for Saw 7, things took a drastic turn. Slotted to direct Saw 3D's direct competitor, Paranormal Activity 3, Gritter was forced back to the Saw franchise through contractual clauses. This was a tough personal blow for Groydert, who was ready to move on from the franchise. Arriving on set only days before shooting and emotionally drained, this conflict carries through into a wreck of a final film that was more about crossing the finish line than finishing the story. Authorship has vastly shaped the idea of the Saw films that when looked at closely, clearly have the marks of the directors who helmed them. From Juan's psychological tale to Bousman's focus on the macabre, from Hackle's art-heavy focus to Greuter's desire to focus on story and then resigned finishing of the series, the men who led these films each had a distinct impact on the direction of the multifaceted franchise.